Welcome to Fort King George. Before we visit Fort King George, let's talk a little bit about the history of the area. There was an Indian village on this site before the English built their fort here. In fact, the site was abandoned when they came here. Just goes to show that a good location is always reused by people. The Wali Indians had lived here for about 12,000 years before the English arrived. And this is an example of one of their village houses. The walls are made of mud and straw around a wooden structure. The Spanish arrived in the late 1500s and established a mission in the area of the fort. The ruins of this mission can be found near the visitor's center. The mission did not last, and by the time the English arrived, the mission was gone, and the Indians had abandoned the site. Before Fort King George was built, the Spanish and the French had both claimed this area. This 1718 French map shows the French claiming most of North America, including the site of Fort King George. This 1721 British map, which was a copy of the 1718 French map, shows the Spanish claim of Florida that extended up to the Carolinas. So we have two European powers claiming this area. Then the British want to claim the area by moving in and building Fort King George to establish the English claim of what would become Georgia. So now that we know a little bit about the background of Fort King George, let's go visit the fort that was reconstructed to appear as it did in 1721. Fort King George is a state of Georgia historic site and when you enter the fort the first thing you come to is the blockhouse. This was the main defensive structure of the fort and the first structure built inside the fort in 1721 to guard against the Spanish. This is the second floor because there is a floor below this. They have cannon ports to fire out of and what appears to be another door on this side. This blockhouse would have been the main defensive structure of the fort, built in 1721. This is quite a structure to be building by hand in this area of the country. That would have been hot work. Standing at the door without stairs, you get a good view of the cannon positions that defend the fort against any ships on the river. Now let's go up the stairs to the third floor of the blockhouse. Now the stairs we're going up did not exist in the original blockhouse. They were put in for the convenience of the visitors that visit the fort. The original blockhouse, the men would have used a ladder to get from one floor to the other. They could remove the ladder and then put a grate over the floor so no one would fall through. On this level of the blockhouse, men would have fired out the holes all around this building. They could even fire down upon the people if they got too close to the blockhouse. Now one of the interesting things about this blockhouse is they have these little blocks that can be removed and you can fire straight down into the entrance. Now let's go up to the catwalk that is above the third level where the lookouts would have gone. And from up here, you get a great view. You can see the back side of the fort over there. Now we turn and go to the other side of the blockhouse. And from here, we get a great view of the river system. Well, now let's go down to the ground level. Let's 
down here we have storage areas and it looks like a workshop this actually looks like a setup to heat cannonballs so when they hit a ship they might catch them on fire they have a ladder for bringing stuff up and as you can see down here they would have stored barrels down here and locked them up because that's where the gunpowder would have been here we have another storage room where they could have stored more gunpowder this storage area down here is quite fascinating but I don't know if you can see it too well with the light that we have down here all right now let's leave the blockhouse and go look at the rest of the fort once we pass the blockhouse we have quite a few buildings in the fort This appears to be the main parade ground of the fort. Now the longest building in the fort is the enlisted barracks. So let's go inside the enlisted barracks, see what we can find. Once again, we have a fireplace at each end, but notice how many more people are staying in the enlisted quarters and they're bunked one on top of the other let's do a quick walk through of the enlisted barracks at this fort a lot of the enlisted men died because the conditions around here were not good for that time. People died of disease and sickness, lots of mosquitoes around here to spread things. So being an enlisted man in this place would not have been fun. The building with the bell on it is the officer's quarters. This is where the officers would have stayed. And as you can see on the inside, they've got a fireplace at each end and tables to eat at and they have a sleeping loft in here that the officers could have slept in the officers had it quite a bit better at this location there were not as many bunks in this room plus they could sleep in the lofts and they had a nice dining area now let's go into the doctor's quarters in the fort this was the doctor's quarters. He was the only one that had his own private spaces. That just goes to show you how important the doctor was. I'm standing on the back side of the fort on a raised platform you can walk up with on stairs. From here, you can get a really good overview of the inside of the fort. They even have a reconstructed outhouse. This one would have had four seats. That's a busy outhouse. This was the bakery for the fort. They have the blacksmith area in the fort. They do have demonstrations in the blacksmith area from time to time. They have the fort boat here. They probably would have put a sail in it, to get it down the river. All along the river side of the fort, they have the main battery. Now the main battery has platforms for the guns to roll back and forth on. 
that's so they can load it and at the back of every platform they have a block of wood to stop the cannons from rolling off the platforms when they're being fired it'd be a real hard time to get them back on the platforms here we see a blockhouse in the western corner of the fort and the main battery and the lookout towers now i'm here at the fort at the beginning of october so i can just imagine how hot it would have been in the summer here because it's warm today you can go out the back side of the fort and walk directly down to the river and you can see the tide the current here is pretty strong you can actually see it in the water moving things around having the fort right on the river makes a lot of sense you can bring materials and supplies in by water also to defend this area it's good to be on the waterways there is a moat that runs along the outside of the fort all the way around the fort they even have a highlander cottage here for some of the men that lived in this area and we go inside and you can see that it has this small fireplace table and the door is actually laying on the bed today and this place has a dirt floor and above you have a loft for sleeping here at Fort King George they've discovered the graves of quite a few soldiers they just don't know who they are and they've got a nice monument here for these people here in the museum they have displays about the Native American culture here and then the Spanish arriving at the fort area and the missions they had here and then Fort George Fort King George I should say they have a display of weapons here and then along the wall they have pictures and letters and some local is history in the area information about the lumber industry and then here an example of the lumber office Well, I hope you've enjoyed our visit to Fort King George. This is an interesting place and I recommend coming to see it.